I spent last week working with an engineer who's leading a team building a pretty big complex venture project. And he came to me with a bunch of different questions about how do you implement certain features. And one of them was really interesting, so I want to explore it a little bit in this video. Here's a requirement. Customers can have a status, active or suspended. And if the customer is suspended, they can still log in and so on, but they cannot place an order. So we took a look at this requirement and I was able to just implement the whole thing as he was sitting there. And it's a good demonstration of a few different features of our extensibility, like the custom fields, like the custom order process. And in this video, I'm going to just go through this requirement and implement it and show you how that can be done. So we're starting off with a clean Venger installation. As you can see, we have the Venger CLI, which comes now by default. So the first thing we'll do is to create a new plugin. In Venger, we like to house every individual unit of functionality inside a plugin. It helps keep things separated, easy to maintain, and also reusable. So we'll say npx Venger add. We want to create a new plugin. It's now going to analyze the project, figure out what directories to put things in, where our config file is, and so on. We'll name it customer status. Now it's going to generate the scaffold. Okay, at this point, I could add some more features to the plugin, but this is going to be a pretty simple one. So I'm going to say, no, I'm done. Let's take a look at what happened there. So here's our plugin and we can see in our config file, the new plugin has been imported up here and it's been added down here to our plugins array. So that's a good start. We'll take the first part of the requirement, which is customers can have a status active or suspended. So this is not something that is built into Venger. We don't have a customer status, so we're going to add that first. The way we're going to do that is using the custom fields feature. So that would go right here in our plugins configuration block. We'll say config custom fields customer, and then we'll push a new definition on there. We're going to have the name be status, and the type will be okay. The type will be string. Because we want to have uh, just particular statuses available, we want to give it options. This means that there's only certain valid statuses. And we said active or suspended. Okay, active and then suspended. Okay, so that's the custom field definition. Let's take a look at how that is now. We'll do npm run dev to start up the dev server. So let's log in and take a look at how that is. We'll go to our products. Uh, so, uh, sorry, we'll go to our customers, open up that customer detail. And now we can see that the custom field is there. We have a status where we can select one of the two options that we've given. Another nice thing with the custom fields is that we can also see those values in the lists now. And if we like, we can also filter by those custom field values. So custom fields is really powerful. It gives you a lot out of the box. It really saves a ton of time implementing these custom features. So first requirement is done. That was pretty easy. A customer can be active or suspended. The next part is a little bit more complex. It says if suspended, they can still log in, etc., but cannot place an order. So the way we're going to implement that is using a custom order process. We'll just look at the documentation and head over to core concepts, orders, and then custom order process. And the custom order process allows us to customize the different states that an order can travel through during the checkout, uh, during the whole life cycle of the order. And it also gives us hooks where we can do validations between those state changes. So I'm going to just copy this and we'll go into our plugin. And just for convenience, I'm going to dump it right in this file right here. We're not going to define any new state, so I can delete this whole block. And I'll add here the on state on transition start hook. And we're going to get the from state, the to state, and then some data that we can use. So this is a matter of saying if the to state equals, and then is it any? Ah, okay. I actually got to import the order state type from here. Okay, now we should have some completion. Good. So if the two state is arranging payment and data dot order dot customer dot custom fields. And then what did we call it? Status status 
suspended. If that's the case, then we're gonna return an error message, which will be the string customer is suspended, that'll do. Okay, now you might have noticed here that we've got uh, some red Pro property status does not exist on type. That's because at build time, we don't know about the custom fields because they are something that just exists at runtime. So there is a way to tell TypeScript about these custom field types, which makes the whole authoring experience much nicer. And it's not too difficult, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go back to the docs, look up custom fields, down right at the bottom, we've got TypeScript typings. And here's an example of how to do it. So I'll copy that. And let's again, paste that up here. We want to call it custom, customer fields, and we have then the field definition, status, string, let's not just have it as like, if we have it as string, we will see that now this is okay because it thinks it's a string, but you know, we can go one better than that because there's actually only two valid strings, which is active and suspended. So let's do it like that. There we go. So now, you know, TypeScript is smart enough that it really gives us the valid options. So it really stops us from making mistakes. Okay, so we've got that state transition hook set up. Now we just need to pass this into our config. So config.orderoptions.process.push and we'll push that onto our order process. All right, that should be enough. Let's check it out. Start up the dev server again. Dev server is running. Okay, so we have this first customer here is active. So let's just do a test run first and we'll try and place an order with that customer. So here we are with our API client app. This is Yak that I'm using. If you've used Postman or Insomnia, this is like a better version that's less bloated. Uh, I've made a whole video about this, so check it out on the YouTube channel. But we're going to go and we're going to log in using, look, see the email address, Cleta Wayner. That's this user here. So we log in. Okay, and now let's go to add item to an order. Okay, the item is added. We then need to set the order shipping method. Okay, we've got standard shipping, $5. And now we try to transition to the arranging payment state. And it worked okay, because this order is, this, this customer is active. Now let's go to the next customer, Hetty, and we're gonna set Hetty to suspended. Copy that email address. And we go back over here. Now let's log in as Hetty. All right, and Hetty will add an item to the order. And now set order shipping method. Did that work? We've got no shipping lines. Ah, we've got standard shipping right here. Okay, that's good. Now, we'll see if our plugin works at all. We'll try to transition to arranging payment. And what should happen in theory is that we should get to this hook where the two state is arranging payment. And in this instance, the customer custom field status is suspended. And then we should return this error. Let's see. All right, that looks good. So what we have is an order state transition error. Cannot transition order from adding items to arranging payment. The transition error is customer is suspended. So let's take a look back at our requirement. So customers can have a status. Yep, we did that. And I think we can put a check mark on the second requirement. If suspended, they can still log in, but cannot place an order. So let's just review how we did that. We created a new plugin because everything should go in a plugin generally. That's just a good way to build Avenger app. Keeps everything encapsulated. We defined the custom field and we defined this very simple customer validation process and added it to the config. And that's it. So I hope this has been useful. It's actually quite enjoyable to go through these use cases and build real world things and just show how flexible and how customizable Venger is and, and also how quickly you can do it. And there's not much that needs to go into building what is a fairly complex custom feature, I think in, in a lot of platforms that would be quite hard to do. As you can see, I've just done it in a few minutes. And I think I'd like to do more videos like this. So feel free to give suggestions on features and different use cases that you're thinking about that you'd like to see me build just like this. And uh, I'll probably make some more videos of this kind. All right, thanks for watching.